Good afternoon, all. I think the day is far spent. So if um, Femi and um, um, Kadira will not come on the stage to be properly acknowledged, I said to my people that there's really no need for me to also have a podium here. Let's share what we have. It's all about the leadership and the kind of trust that we need to have for our citizens. Um, having watched the movie for the past two hours or so, I, I think there's really no need um, reading any speech again, because indeed, the movie um, on mask has delivered something that I imagine is thought-provoking, um, other than to say that um, the lessons is certainly not lost on me personally, and certainly not lost on my government. I know that indeed, what COVID had uh, brought forward to us are things that are indeed, if we take the positive side of it, we can use to galvanize and to create, you know, that tomorrow and the belief that we're saying to ourselves. You know, I listened to um, the views and thoughts as shared by um, a young banker friend of mine who is the MD of Sterling Bank, um, uh, Abubakar Suleiman, who was actually very, very strong and very critical, you know, at all around governance and the kind of things, you know, that has failed in our systems, you know, reflecting and seeing that it's really not the governance that has failed, not the word governance, but it's people. It's really not religion, really, that has failed. It's also the people. And so let's look at ourselves in the face and ask ourselves that what are the lessons and the learning that COVID indeed has passed on to our generation? What are we doing differently that will ensure that all of the mistakes, you know, known and unknown, that COVID has caused us, how are we positioning ourselves to ensure that it doesn't happen again? I'm certainly not set, I'm not, I'm not sure that if you go downstairs, you probably will not still see five or six or seven cars that are also in my own convoy. So I, I really cannot stand there and begin to talk about um, the things that have gone wrong in the government or the things that we, we can change. But the truth be told is that the structure of our governance system are the kind of things that we need to look into and change. If it is to say that the cost of governance is heavy and is big, those are some reality that we need to speak up and, and ask ourselves, you know, the, the sincere truth. And let's make the change when we have the opportunity to make those changes. There's some point there to that. When it's day for election and all of it, when you get a 20% or a 15% of people that will come up and say that just because they think that I'm not going to count my vote, we're not going to vote, then you don't come out to vote. Then you end up having only 20% of 100% that has gone to elect your leaders. Then you are stuck with whatever you have. And so the change has to be about all of us. You know, as small as this audience is, it's about all of us. That's what I see as a real change that, can, that COVID indeed can help us. There's really no need to talk about all of the modest attempt that the learning and the lessons of COVID has given to me and to give to my government, you know, as, as a pointer for us to know that that change, you know, that we desire, indeed, COVID has fast-tracked for us. So, um, other than to say that um, we are living testimonials to the fact that things can still get better in this country, things should get better in this country, things have to get better in this country. Sitting down here half of the time, I'm also checking my phone. I'm checking my phone because I get security reports almost on a 30, 30 minutes basis of what is happening around the state, around the city. Right? So we all talk about the issues around security and all of the things that were... Nobody wants a bridge. Nobody wants a bridge in front of his house, but everybody wants a traffic to be resolved. Let me repeat. Nobody wants a bridge in front of, it, of his house, but everybody wants a traffic to be resolved. Right? Nobody likes Okada, right? but everybody wants us and say that we should not trade some, some of them away. And so tough decisions sometimes have to come out from all of the things that we see. There are very difficult moments that everybody is going through now, not only as a nation, but even worldwide. And so sometimes some of those decisions might be tough, might not be the, 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 the nicest around, but it will obviously be taken. So living here today is to ask Kadira and um, Femi, how are we going to push this narrative forward? It's a fairly long movie. So because you are not going to serve popcorn and all of that, you probably will not get 
you know, that intellectual audience that will need to profile it and dissect it and let the learning and the lessons, you know, get to the right sector. Both people in government, both people in legislature, both people in media, in academia, in entertainment, that needs to learn the lessons of it and get all of us better prepared because another pandemic will still come. Tomorrow, next, tomorrow, next year, 10 years time, it will come. So it's not about a medical pandemic alone. It could be an hunger pandemic. It could be a security pandemic. It could be a, 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 a governance pandemic. Whatever it is, how prepared? What is the level of our resilience? I think what Omas has done for us is really to continue to challenge the status quo. And I think the conversations that will be coming after this evening will certainly set the tone. Thank you very much.